In this video, I'm going to talk about all these uh, RTX 4070 Ti Super graphics cards. Now, I already did a full review of the chip itself, so today I'm just going to focus on these seven different models, uh, see how they compare to each other when it comes to gaming performance, features, uh, price, thermals, noise, and so on. And most importantly, if you already decided to get an RTX 4070 Ti Super, uh, this video might help you decide which model would fit you best. So let's begin. There is no founder's edition of this card, so the card I'm going to start with is the Ventus 3X from MSI. This is a base MSRP card, so it should cost you $800 in the US or 900 euros here in the EU. It is a decent looking three slot card that is about 31 centimeters long and just over two slots thick. So it's not that small, but it will still fit most mid tower cases easily. Visually, it looks good, but there are some signs of it being on the lower end. There's no real extra features like RGB or dual BIOS. The shroud is made of plastic, but also the back plate is made of plastic, which does give it a bit of a cheaper feel compared to other cards. What you do get is what you can expect from every single card in this roundup and most other TI Supers as well. So you need a 12 volt high power cable to power the card. You get three display ports and one HDMI port in the back and a fan stop feature to keep it quiet in idle. That's it. Next up is the Twin X2 from Inno3D. It is also an MSRP card, but this one is actually selling for a bit less than MSRP in some regions, so it might end up being even cheaper than the MSI Ventus, depending on where you live. It's a bit of a smaller card too. It has a two fan design. It is about 25 centimeters long and two slots thick, and making it more compatible and more interesting for ITX or other small form factor builds. It is also a pretty simple card in terms of features. Uh, there's no RGB and no extra BIOS, but the back plate is metal, so it does feel a little bit better than the Ventus, even though it weighs less. With its 860-ish grams, it is actually the lightest card in this test, with the Ventus being around 200 grams heavier. Gigabyte Gaming OC is a card that's a bit more premium and it should cost you around $50 more than the MSRP models, although the price can vary a lot depending on where you live. So here in the Netherlands, for example, it is around 100 euros over the MSRP. And for that money, you get a much larger three fan card that is roughly 30 centimeters long, close to three slots thick and a lot wider than the previous models. The backplate is nice and metal here, but the shroud is still made of of plastic. Feature-wise, you do get a couple of nice things. Uh, you get a dual bio switch, so you can easily choose between a loud cooler setting or a quieter but slightly warmer one. Uh, you get RGB behind the fans, so if you mount it vertically, it will definitely stand out a bit. And you get an extra fourth year of warranty, which is a very nice big bonus. The Aero card has pretty much the same heatsink design as the Gaming OC, with a slightly different looking uh, white and silver color shroud, and without the RGB behind the fans. It does have the dual BIOS feature and the extra year of warranty, so it's very similar and it should be similar in price as well. The Tough Gaming OC from ASUS uh, also costs about $50 more than the MSRP in the US, but also varies in price depending on where you are. So just like the Gaming OC from Gigabyte, it is actually about 100 euros more than the MSRP here in the Netherlands. ASUS is going a bit of a different way in terms of adding value. So they don't add an extra year of warranty, but they give you a nice build quality instead. So here, the shroud and the back plate are all metal, uh, which gives this card a proper premium feel. It also has a dual BIOS feature and it adds an extra HDMI port to the back as well. Similar to the Gaming OC, it is also about 30 centimeters long and three slots thick, so it's not on the small side and you should definitely keep compatibility in mind. The Gaming Pro White Edition from Palette is pretty hard to find in the US and the EU, so it's difficult to know its exact price, but it should cost you somewhere between 50 and 100 dollars or euros over the MSRP. It is a very large three fan card that is 33 centimeters long, three slots thick, and it weighs over 1600 grams. So it is significantly heavier than most other cards in this roundup. Uh, only the RG Strix weighs more. The build quality feels very decent, even though the shroud is plastic. And at first glance, it looks a bit like the Gigabyte Aero, but Pallet has a lot more RGB, which you can control using your motherboard software and an addressable RGB cable that sits next to 
the 12 volt high power connection. But it also doesn't have a dual BIOS feature. It doesn't come with an extra year of warranty and it doesn't have any extra connections in the back. The ROG Strix OC is a top tier model from ASUS. Uh, it is 34 centimeters long and it weighs 1800 grams, which makes it the biggest and the heaviest card in this roundup, but also the most expensive with a price premium of $150 or euros. And for that money, you get a dual BIOS, an extra HDMI port in the back, a lot of RGB and two extra fan headers as well. It is really well built and it looks very impressive. Just keep in mind that it has those red and blue details that might not work with some builds. But let's see how these cards compare to each other. So if you're after compatibility, Inno 3D is the most compact card of them all and the only card in this roundup that stays within two slots. It is also shorter and less wide than others, so it will be great for a small form factor builds, but in larger cases, it might look a bit underwhelming. Now weight is usually not a concern when you are looking for a GPU, but there is almost a kilo of difference between the X2 and the ROG Strix, with the palette being surprisingly heavy as well. Now weight is also not a perfect indicator of quality, but it does mean that the material cost is higher. So the official boost spec of the RTX 4070 Ti Super is 2610 megahertz, but as usual, all these cards boost way higher than that. The two gigabyte cards lead the chart, uh, followed closely by the palette and the Strix, and the two MSRP cards are pretty close as well. Only the tough gaming from ASUS ended up a bit behind. Now keep in mind that boost speeds will vary a bit from sample to sample, but still, this is not an insignificant gap. Looking at memory clocks, uh, all cards report the exact same speed, so yet again, none of these cards come with overclocked memory out of the box. But in actual games, the difference between all these cards is very small. Only if you're comparing the fastest model to the slowest model, uh, there is a significant difference of about 4%, uh, mostly caused by the tough gaming card trailing back a little bit. But in Starfield, however, on 4K resolution, uh, with the frame rate being slightly lower, it becomes really hard to tell a difference between any of them, even if you compare them side by side. Now, most of these cards run really quiet straight out of the box, with only the Inno 3D being noticeably louder than the rest. ASUS and MSI ran a bit quieter than a Gigabyte by default, with Gigabyte cards being just a little bit more audible, but using the second BIOS kept them really quiet as well. Of course, the Tough and the Strix can be even quieter using their second BIOS, so technically, if you want the quietest cards, uh, ASUS gets the win. Now, I have to admit that I was impressed by the palette here, which was the quietest out of the box. It doesn't have the second BIOS, but I also don't think it needs it either. And if you're worried about coil wine, uh, none of these cards had any in my testing, even when looking at some super high FPS menu screens, uh, where coil wine is generally more likely to occur. Looking at the core and hotspot temperatures, uh, most of the more premium cards actually performed pretty much the same, which does mean the Strix and the Gaming Pro are the most efficient of them all, as they were also quieter. But none of these cards perform badly. The Ventus and the Twin X2 are a bit behind, with their hotspots approaching 80 degrees, but they are still more than fine. Now, memory temps are not an issue because it doesn't need to be super cool, but it still shouldn't get too hot either. But as you can see here, all cards were doing fine as well. In terms of power, there was only a small variation between these cards. So the MSI uh, used the least amount of power, followed by the Inno 3D and the Palette, with the other four cards using exactly 284 watts in the same test, which is not enough of a difference to start looking into power cost, in my opinion. So again, I don't think you can really go wrong with any of these cards. Uh, if you like a particular brand, if you like a particular look, or if you find a good deal on any of these. Now the Inno 3D Twin X is noticeably a little bit louder than the rest, but it is also the smallest, so it is the most compatible with smaller cases, and it is also the cheapest in some regions. And considering the TI Super should have been cheaper to begin with, uh, compared to the 4070 Super and the 4080 Super, I think that any model that is below MSRP is just a step in the right direction. But MSI Ventus does offer a nice experience, in my opinion, if you 
you have enough space for a larger card. I don't like the plastic back plate, but it does perform about the same as the Twin X2, just at a noticeably lower noise level, which is something I personally value a lot. And as you might have guessed, uh, the problem with all premium TI Supers is the price. So they get way too close to the 4080 Super, which is about 18% faster. And since these, uh, premium 4070 Ti Supers are not really faster than the MSRP models, it is impossible to recommend cards like the ROG Strix, for example, that will cost you $950, even if it's the most efficient and best built of them all. Now, the cards that are in between MSRP and the ROG Strix do offer some value, so they're all a bit more efficient than the MSRP models. The palette looks great in white, it adds a bunch of RGB and it performs really well. Uh, the Gigabyte cards look great as well, they come with a dual BIOS and offer an extra year warranty, which is very valuable. And the Tough Gaming adds an extra HDMI port in the back. It has a completely solid metal design and it runs quieter than the others. Uh, all things that you can justify spending a little bit more on. Just please make sure that the price premium is small and actually reasonable and don't lose track of the alternatives on the market, whether it's other TI Supers, uh, 4080 Supers or anything else really. Now that's all I had for today, but before I go, let's check out the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their brand new micro ATX case, the 2500X. It is a stunning, well-built dual chamber case that can fit pretty much any high power system you have in mind, while offering great performance and lots of glass panels so you can see your hardware and all your RGB properly. And if you want to spice things up a bit, you can get a mesh front panel instead, or different wooden panels that change the look of the case completely and offer something a bit more special. Check it out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching this video and for sticking to the end. Uh, if you liked it and you want to see more videos like this one, please do consider clicking that subscribe button so you never miss my future uploads. Bye guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye!